Anyone who's taken a prescription drug knows they come with side effects. It's a matter of weighing the risks versus the benefits and trusting your doctor's advice. But some people claim a class of antibiotics called fluoroquinolones has left them suffering from unusual and debilitating health problems. What's more, they say, they were never properly warned. As Sean O'Shea uncovered, that has been a bitter pill to swallow. In 1928, Alexander Fleming changed the face of medicine almost by accident. Mold from a discarded experiment turned out to be just what he'd been looking for, a treatment that could kill harmful bacteria without killing people along with it. That discovery became known as the miracle of the 20th century, penicillin. Ever since, drug companies like Bayer have been moving pharmaceutical science forward with new helpful drugs. And that's exactly the caring image videos like these promote to the public. But not everyone is buying it. Mark Gerard's world is very small these days. And he blames the side effects of Leviquin, part of a family of antibiotics called fluoroquinolones. There's two chapters to my life before I took Leviquin and since I took Leviquin. And uh, it's been terrible. The first chapter was a larger than life epic. Mark was literally on top of the world. I lived in the top of the Colorado Rockies, worked at ski resorts. But then he broke his ankle and had to have surgery. When the surgical wound got infected, doctors administered Leviquin. From there, the problems snowballed. Within weeks of taking the Leviquin, the swelling began and the, and the pain began. Eventually, Mark had to have another surgery to repair the torn tendons. This scar here is where my peroneal brevis tendons ruptured. On his other leg, a network of inflamed veins reads like a road map, leading to yet another in a series of surgeries. But it wasn't until last year that he finally learned his health problems could be due to Leviquin. Mark says that information came from the internet, not from the manufacturer or a doctor. There was no warning, no discussion of any possible side effects whatsoever. Since then, chapter two of Mark's story has turned into a tale of woe. I've got one problem after another, after another, after another, and it doesn't look like they're going to end. And I'm broke, and I've lost everything. And I live at my sister's house because she helps me. I'm depressed. I, I think about suicide every day. He places the blame squarely on the drug makers. It's not something they're just finding out now. These people are criminals. They're, they belong in prison for the rest of their lives. Mark's story is not a surprise to Terrence Young. There are a whole range of adverse effects from that group of drugs. And that's why they shouldn't be prescribed as a first-line uh, defense against uh, those conditions. They should be an antibiotic that you use after you've tried other antibiotics. The MP from Oakville, Ontario, learned in the most tragic way possible how a lack of timely warnings about the risks of prescription drugs can destroy lives. It all goes back to when we lost Vanessa. In 2000, Young's world was turned upside down when his 15-year-old daughter's heart suddenly stopped beating after taking medication for a stomach problem, a medication that has since been discontinued. The emergency crew got her to hospital, uh, but it was too late. She died the next day, March 19th. From then on, Young focused all his grief into finding out how this could have happened, and what he says he learned was disturbing. I found more and more corrupt practices that prevented doctors and patients learning what the true risk of prescription drugs were. And the reason that's happening is the incredible marketing power of the pharmaceutical industry. These are the wealthiest companies in the world in many cases. And so they have billions of dollars for marketing, billions of dollars. Young eventually wrote a book about his daughter's death and the powerful forces he believes were behind it. Millions of injuries and about 200,000 deaths in North America every year. The numbers are staggering. Pharmaceutical giant Bayer rang up about a billion dollars in sales from its two brand name fluoroquinolones in 2010, Avalox and Cipro. 
Janssen Ortho markets Leviquin in Canada. In the same year, its parent company, Johnson & Johnson, sold more than $1.3 billion worth. Those impressive sales figures are in spite of equally stunning numbers of reported adverse reactions and deaths associated with fluoroquinolones. The drug companies claim fewer than 1% of clinical trial subjects suffered serious reactions. Still, Health Canada's database contains about 2,000 reports classified as serious and about 100 deaths linked to fluoroquinolone since 1985. Freedom of information documents obtained from the U.S. FDA show more than 50,000 adverse reactions and 3,000 deaths where fluoroquinolones are suspected. And Young says it may be much worse. Multiply that figure times 100 because most doctors never report an adverse drug reaction and most patients never report one. So the actual adverse drug reaction reports they get represent around 1% of the reality. The drug industry is now gone off on a very bad tack. It's a very profit-oriented industry. Tony Merchant has launched Canadian class action lawsuits against the makers of the three brand name fluoroquinolones approved by Health Canada. Avalox, Cipro and Leviquin. He says there were adverse reactions being reported in Europe as far back as the 1980s. They knew or ought to have known about the problems and they didn't disclose the problems so they didn't give to doctors the real opportunity to select another drug instead of these drugs and put their patients at risk in the result. But despite lawsuits like his, Merchant says drug companies don't appear to be changing their ways. They still wait to be told, they still wait to be caught. With this drug, they were told in Europe first, then they were told in the United States. The drug companies continue to market drugs even when they know that there are problems because they have a huge investment in the drug. The drug companies have yet to file a response to his allegations. In 2008, the US FDA produced this video explaining its decision to put the strongest possible warning on fluoroquinolones about the risk of tendon injuries. The product information literature also contains a variety of other warnings about heart complications, gastrointestinal and central nervous system problems. It may be too late for Mark Gerard, but you'd think the danger to patients would be over. Not according to this woman. This will never go away, and this, I think, will be forever. It's been over a year now. Next on 16...